is that? Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television, inviting you to a chilly edition <laughs> of Missoula Live. Um, only it wasn't live because yesterday was President's Day. Right, it's it's not Tuesday, live. February the 20th. We have a few guests for you, four interesting groups. And um, I want to introduce my co host, yes, Kim hi. Anderson. Kim Anderson, I'm on the board of yes. MCAT. And I am also the Director of Programs and Grants for Humanities Montana. You guys have a really interesting series coming up on the yes. role of journalism can in I democracy. Can I talk about that for one second? Please, okay. and we, we can show the website. That's where I noticed yes, that. Yes, brand new banner announcing yeah. this. Um, we received funding from the Mellon Foundation, um, and it is to have conversations around the state on the importance of journalism in a democracy. I think this is very well timed. And it's a partnership with the Pulitzer Prize organization. There it is, the, the Informed, Informed Citizen, Citizen Initiative. Mm. And so what it means, among other things, is that we have a whole new catalog of programs available for community groups and uh, middle schools and high schools. Uh, about 12 different programs on various aspects of journalism. Topics like what is fake news, topics like um, what are journalistic ethics. They do in fact exist and reputable media organizations have, you know, very uh, codified ethics and standards and transparency policies. Um, things like what are the best movies featuring reporters. Oh yeah, like yeah, the post is out recently, yeah, right? Yeah, a great movie. Or um, another topic is um, investigative journalism. Mm -hmm. And as um, media companies have less funds for reporting, things like international reporting or uh, long-term, uh, you know, deep dives into topics, um, you know, the dangers of that. So there's a whole bunch of topics. We'll also help your group have a conversation about various media issues if you're interested in doing that. And the way to access all of that is to go to our website. As we showed as the we gentle showed, viewer at home. It's called The Informed Citizen, or you can always just call me. Yeah. <laughs> and this is great, Kim, because it's available statewide, right? So yes. if somebody is in a town, I don't know, maybe they're in Florence, maybe right. they're in Augusta, maybe they're in Sydney, maybe right. they're in Malta, they could access some of the speakers and have a program, like we'll, in their yeah, local library or community free center. Free to the group. We right. cover all the costs. Yeah, that's really great yeah, and a great exciting. service. It's humanitiesmontana.org. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, we put the show, uh, Scott will put it on Facebook, so it's range yeah. is out of town. So if any of you out of towners are watching, go to humanitiesmontana.org and just to see, because yeah. this is a fascinating topic. I mean, not just its political currency, but I was thinking of how what a short time it is, like when you and I were young, the internet wasn't invented. Exactly. Well, there, there was the paper. Right. The and paper of record, right? your father right? and mother read the paper. The paper. <laughs> the paper. And there was so only the one, yeah. There wasn't so many stories. And so I feel like may, I'm either devolving or evolving. I mean, part of it right? is good. I start every morning reading the New York Times. Yeah, I could not have done that, that Wall you know, Street Journal. 30 years ago. Then I switched to BBC. Right. Then I switched to CNN. I you know. know. But there's so much we take in. Yeah. And there's so many stories. Like, and it's also, it's really hard to know where some new, if you're getting your news on Facebook, it's hard to know where it's coming from. Right, it really is. And then of course, yeah. if you're, um, you know, of a particular political persuasion, well likely you're seeing everything from your persuasion. I do and a little of that myself. Crosswise. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when people on Facebook have a friend that, that politically doesn't lean in their, their uh, direction, they're shocked at some of the stuff either side. It's like, mm -hmm. what? What? <laughs> <laughs> so I think this really deserves a lot of thought Thanks. and a lot of conversation. And so that's terrific. And um, remember MCAT recorded a live stream for you guys from yes. Imagination Brewery. That's on your Facebook page. Yes, still. it is. It, so it, people it, it was a great that. example of a, the kind of community conversations that we can do yeah. um, in your community. Um, it was in a in a brewery. It wasn't painful it from was what I got. It was fun. It was painful. fun and it was standing room only. Yeah. Yeah. And people were able to ask questions and they also asked questions via 
the World Wide Web. Right. Because they were watching Because we were streaming, thanks to you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, so apropos of MCAT, there are a few things I would like um, to talk about. One thing is our, um, our public input focus This groups. is all new to me because I've been out of town. Yeah, so what we're doing is asking people in the community to uh, take a look at the MCAT.org. This is where they're going to see it. See the splash mm -hmm. or landing page. Mm -hmm. it says MCAT focus groups. And then um, there's actually its own page in the upper left, focus groups. You can click on that, Scott, and we'll show people. Um, there's language there that explains what we're doing. Right. What we're doing is trying to um, get community input so that when the city of Missoula goes to talk to the cable supplier, Charter Spectrum, they'll say, wow, we talked to. 80 people, 100 mm -hmm. people, and they said this about the next 10 years, local media, Missoula, these are some of the needs that we'll have. So that's what we're inviting the general public to do, is to pick out a focus group, and they all meet at the Missoula Public Library, the large meeting room downstairs. Mm -hmm. It'll be Tuesday, April 3rd, um, Wednesday, April 4th, four focus groups, and they have categories. Right. But the notion is, if what just go to whatever fits your schedule, it would be okay. Categories may be a plus mm -hmm. because the, there may be a conversation around themes like education or community nonprofit, civic and faith-based groups, right? That kind of thing. So that is one invitation. Another invitation comes from Neil and Scott, who are our youth media counselors. Mm -hmm. So they want to have a spring flicks. They have like a winter picks. And now they're up to spring flicks. This is Scott's design. Nice, it is full Scott. of fun. Uh, <laughs> I like it. One hundred and fifty dollars is looming there. Wow. Um, but these spring flicks are—it's like a day media camp for kids. So parents think, ooh, that's a long period of time, you know, for the kids to be home. This is spring break. Yeah, for yeah. spring break. I think it's March twenty-sixth to March thirtieth, and you can go on MCAT.org, and this is the third of the splash pages or second. Um, it de kind of describes what's going on. The camps will have um, activity nine to three. We'll have pre and post care. Mm -hmm. That's where the kids can hang out, eat snacks, wait for the parents to be able to pick them up, and mm -hmm. so on. And this is, um, I think, it's four days. I'm waiting for Scott to correct me. I think oh, five. Okay, he's yeah. He said it's five days. Mm -hmm. It's Monday through Friday. That's it's such a bargain. One hundred and fifty dollars to keep your kids busy over spring break. Yeah, <laughs> that's it's a like, huge bargain. It's pretty much the same period that <laughs> school would meet. Yeah. You know, like a sometime after eight till sometime after Do it. three. So all that's on the website. Um, I'm out of stuff. Well, except Saturday Animation, which is doing a very nice uh, trade of youngsters. Brisk business. Brisk business. I think those guys had 14, if I counted Jeez. right, um, last Saturday. And they've been averaging now 10 to 14 kids. And that's every Saturday, uh, 1 to 5 p.m., for $10. You can drop off your child and they can do stop animation. They can play with our virtual reality. Right. They can play on Scott's hoverboard if they don't promise not to break a bone. It's gotta be nice to Scott though. Yeah, I suppose that. that's yeah. part of it. <laughs> well, that's all the okay. news that, that I think I should give about it's MCAT. Busy. So we get to welcome our first guest, Katie Nelson. Hello. Thank you, Thank you for being so patient while we yeah. run through our stuff. <laughs> um, Katie's here to represent Moon Randolph Homestead, where she's co-caretaker, and um, they have an event coming up called Prune the Moon, which I think is cool. Oh. <laughs> it's um, Saturday, March 10th. Take it away. Great. Yeah, so um, this is an event that got started about three years ago when a former caretaker, um, Matt LaRubio, who now mm -hmm. works and runs, helps run Western Cider, yeah. um, he, when he lifted the Moon Randolph Homestead, uh, he, you know, got to know um, the orchard, and this orchard was planted in the 1890s. That's right. Um, more than 100 years ago, and the trees have been, they're, they're, they're big, and they're kind of gnarly, and um, they haven't been tended for, they, they weren't, hadn't been tended for quite some time until um, Matt got the idea to hold this event, and it's a really neat opportunity to get out and learn about pruning, with some really experienced arborists. Uh, we'll have Mark Vandermeer of Watershed Consulting mm -hmm. and Bad Goat Lumber, and then um, Michael Billingsley of Western Cider out to help, you know, whether you are a very experienced arborist and tree climber or are just interested in learning how to prune, we can get people out in the field and 
um, yeah, enjoy the late winter and a beautiful orchard. Yeah. And the and the purpose of it is to get those trees back in yeah the condition that they should be in. Is That's that right. right. Yeah. So you know, I think that it'll never be like a production orchard, right? Um, but we picked a lot of apples actually this past year uh, to make cider and um, we're hoping that kind of with continued pruning and, and regeneration that that the, tr- the the trees will be more productive Funny. and it's an educational opportunity too Absolutely. if people want to learn how to do their own pruning. I'm scared to death yeah. to prune I yeah, would love I to learn too. how to I prune to, I always yeah. think it's the wrong time or mm-hmm. in the wrong spot well, and my, my thing is benign neglect. Um, yeah. Um, my, around my house, there's an apricot tree. Yeah. And I'll go ahead and say it. It's the only <laughs> one left. Like, it just cut yeah. into my heart when oh. Katie said, the, you know, it's from 1890. Because yeah. my, it wasn't my orchard necessarily. Behind mm-hmm. my house, there was an orchard planted in the 1890s. Yeah. And it, it had uh, five cherry trees, eight apple trees, and two apricot trees. Mm-hmm. There's one apricot tree oh, left. When wow. the Orange Street Bridge was widened, it oh, came yeah, in that yeah. way. And with it went that orchard, you know. So there's one apricot tree there, and in the front, a pear. And oh, the yeah. pear's gone wild. And this is what happens with benign neglect. It goes wild, right? Right. And then it's all over the yard, or it's like where people Mm -hmm. want to park, or it's in the neighbor's yard, and so on. So I really need to go. I need to wake up, (laughs) smell the pear coffee, um, (laughs) because I'm not sure what to do. It has, you know, it's very old, both of these trees. But the pear tree, in the spring, it looks like an old woman holding a baby, you know, with the gnarled bark and everything and then the little pear blossoms but it's so big like I think well should you cut the small ones and I Mm -hmm, think the mm -hmm. timing is important isn't it you don't want to be pruning in the middle of summer when the sap is running right well it kind of depends so um kind of the bulk of the pruning happens in late winter so you got to wait until after um the last zero degree day and it's Ah. to kind of avoid winter um injury and so we're, we're, you know, usually like late, usually like late February or early March is kind of the good time to get started with that. And then you want to do that until, you know, before the, um, the apples start blossoming. Right. And so, um, and then in the summertime is actually a good time to prune kind of the suckers mm-hmm. that come up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so just those little, those little shoots that people say they take the all air. the water yeah, yeah. from the exactly. main body. Right. Exactly. And if you, if you trim those out, then it can really help your fruit production actually. And I mean, those trees are just such a huge part of the history of the Moon Randolph homestead. Yeah, in Missoula, really. I mean, yeah. you know, this used to be a huge apple producing region. And it's kind of interesting, it's starting to be revitalized, mm-hmm. I think, with the cideries. With the coming cideries, in. Yeah. right. And so, uh, you know, I think a lot of people around Missoula and in the Bitterroot and uh, so forth, just the whole region really are kind of taking a look at these old apple trees that are just in the backyard that, you know, produce really tiny fruits and wondering, you know, if I gave it a little pruning and a little bit of attention, would they get mm-hmm. bigger and would it be more productive? Yeah, there's a great opportunity to find out. Um, and we didn't really in general explain to the dear viewers what the Moon Randolph homestead yeah. is, but um, Scott, maybe you could play just the beginning of the clip. Yeah. of the out and about when we go to change guests, which will be soon, I guess, because <laughs> apparently <laughs> <laughs> Friends of Irish Studies are going to do a little right. performance. Oh, my oh good. They brought oh some God. instruments That's and exciting. stuff, and we don't yeah. want to torture you anymore. Yeah. But so give us the when, where, and how again yeah. one more time. Sure. It's going to be Saturday, March 10th, March 10th. from okay. 9 to 3 p.m. We'll have black coffee there in the morning, and just to get you going. Yeah. And uh, then we'll have probably some chili for lunch and some bread from Great Harvest. Do people have to bring their tools? So, great question. We'll have yeah, tools that's a available. Good question. If people want to bring tools, um, that would be great. Okay. Uh, and you know, again, like if if you're very experienced, you're you're more than welcome. If if you have never done this before, you can come on up and learn a few things. It's a good idea to bring um, some warm clothes and layers. You know, because mm-hmm. it's early spring. You never know if it's going to be. Um, you know, cold and wet and... Uh, then suddenly sunny and really hot. Mm-hmm. It's a good idea to bring some water too. Right. Mm-hmm. And right. we're just saying, you know, because limbs will be falling and that sort of thing, no dogs and unattended children for this event. So. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then it's up 1515 Spurlock Road. That's correct. Which, um, for people that... Well, how many people <laughs> in this town have gone to the dump? 
you know. Yeah. It's right. You go. It's you go like you're going to the dump, but then you hang a right on Spurlock Road. <laughs> on Spurlock. Yeah, and so, then hang another right where you see the sign for Moon Randolph. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because the homestead is really just on the other side of Waterworks Hill, right. and the mm -hmm. draw on the north side of Waterworks Hill. So to get there, that's the deal. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. to go like you're going to the dump. I didn't know that. No kidding. No? Yeah. Oh, wow. No. Um, yeah, I was thinking maybe Katie walked over. over the well, hill. I was impressed. But not today. Yeah. No, not she walked today. over from, from, today. from, from work. work. <laughs> right. From work. So that is it. Um, Katie, thanks so much for taking thanks the time. Sounds like a great event. event. And, um, and Scott's going to show you guys just a little bit of a visit that I paid last fall to yeah. Moon Randolph Homestead. And at the beginning, um, there's an explanation of what a homestead means yeah. and how this wonderful property came into county. So Great. you'll see that movie yeah. right yeah. back. <laughs> Who are we going to bring in? It's, it's Was the, Caroline second? Oh no, did Treylock proceed her? They can find it out. I think we're bringing <laughs> in the Irish people next, so hang on <laughs> and take a look at Moon Randolph Homestead. <laughs> There. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. <laughs> Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because a pair of cat dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um. So, how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> oh. What is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. <laughs> <laughs> Missoula Community Access Television works with kids in an active learning environment where they get hands-on experience in video production. NCAT offers weekly Saturday classes that spark creativity in kids from 9 to 13 years of age. Located downtown at 500 North Higgins. NCAT Saturday Drop-Ins. Create your story. Ranchers are the stewards of Montana's great grasslands and wetlands. Ducks Unlimited works with ranchers on conservation programs to improve cattle production and wildlife habitat. Montana is the nation's third largest waterfowl producer. 
Ducks Unlimited promotes working lands programs that help keep ranchers on the land while improving habitat for wildlife and Montana's outdoors people. To learn more about conservation at Ducks Unlimited, visit www.ducks.org slash Montana. So, yes, we are we back. back. We're back with one of our favorite guests, Trey Locker Reardon. Thank you so much, Trey. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming. So there's some excitement, and you brought someone with you. I did. Um, I brought a good friend of mine from uh, Ireland, Danny O'Mahony, and he's over here as part of our Springtime of Irish Music series, which we run every two years as part of the Irish Studies program. Right. And what we do is we bring out to um, out here to, to Missoula and to Butte, musicians who are you know custodians of the tradition yeah. they're the ones who've inherited this uh, the musical traditions from their own area uh, they play the music share the music and they come out to talk about their instruments their experience of the tradition the importance of the tradition and the, you know they get the young students we have here and the community to understand you know that Irish music has this heritage going back hundreds and hundreds of years yeah. it's its own language that's speaking to us, reminding us of our history and our heritage and who we are, and knowing that, where we're going, you know? Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. It's great to have people like Danny, so talented, and so well able to speak to this tradition, you know, willing to come out here this long journey, this time yeah. of the year. With this it's cold. double, right? Because you think, say, Dublin, maybe, to New York. You're like, oh, my God. And they're like, no, you got to go <laughs> on. There's yeah. more. There and is. it will be zero degrees when you get here. <laughs> Yes, yeah, we're not used to this type of cold, but it's wonderful, to be honest. You know, it's kind of refreshing. Great it's a shocker, thing. yeah. I mean, if you don't live in it, especially, you know. I brought some Brazilians up here, and when they yeah. first saw the snow, then one of them just started crying. He just bust out <laughs> crying. I'm like, I'm crying, but for a different reason, yeah. see. He just thought it was so beautiful, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that's great about travel. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the first image when you see the, and you talked about it when you came in yesterday and you saw the snow, you know? Yeah. I mean, when we flew into, yeah. into the airport yesterday evening, it's that blueness. Mm -hmm. It's very distinctive. You don't yeah. get it. Mm -hmm. We don't get it. We certainly don't get it. And then getting up this morning, you know, when you look out the window, but, and even when we got the chance to get out of the hotel and walk, walk across through the campus and on the university, and that, the, it's the brightness that hits you immediately, you know? It's that. Uh, whiteness the and clarity, yeah. you know, I associate a bit with Scandinavia or Norway, you know. Oh, sure, yeah. Oh, you know, I don't get that too many places, but it's certainly here and it's fiercely refreshing, mm. you know. <laughs> See, isn't it funny? We all want something else. Everyone else now we want to be on the Emerald Island. We want us to get like soft rain and some roses or something. <laughs> well, we got plenty green. of green. green oh, we got plenty please. shades of green for you. <laughs> you know? Which is true. Every place has its own kind of distinct, yeah. uh, distinctively beautiful. Features, so, you know. Um, mm. can, just in case someone has is, is never tuned into this show, could you give them a little thumb sketch of the Irish Studies program and how this music series is a fundraiser? Well, yeah, well, the Irish Studies program, obviously, you have an Irish Studies program in Montana because you have so many Irish in Montana. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, ours is the largest one west of the Mississippi, and really that's because of the huge support that we receive from the community. It's actually extraordinary because people have asked me, well, how was it that you have such a large program in Montana and they can't get one going in Seattle or San Francisco or, or Denver? I would say you got to come and meet the Irish of Montana. The historical experience was so different. Mm -hmm. They came rather right to a city, they built their own, they worked for an Irishman. So they got this great kind of sense of we can do this, you know? Yeah. This kind of self belief and it's truly support to the community. And the Friends of Irish Studies and the Ancient Order of Hibernians. We have people that are part of the uh, Buttes Liverpool Archives, Montana Haste. I mean, all over the state, no outside the state, you know, that help the, um, to promote Irish Studies. Mm -hmm. We're very, very fortunate as well that uh, we have the University of Montana so willing and so supportive of the program. So it has been growing and growing. And uh, we have. Um, you know, Irish language, and we have the music and the dance and literature and history and study abroad and all these different aspects. But there are certain elements that I really enjoy, and one of them is the music and uh, bringing over musicians from Ireland. And when they come and meet the musicians from uh, the United States, you know, that are from our area here, like it's like the coming together of a family, you know, they're speaking the same language. Yeah. This is what music is done mm -hmm. doing. And there's a great kind of a coming together and a celebration, and a great understanding that this culture does not belong in Ireland. It's actually a global culture now, 
and it unites those of Ireland and those of Irish heritage throughout the world. And even those who are not of, in terms of the DNA of Irish, but they are basically Irish in their kind of cultural kind of identity. They gravitate towards Irish uh, music and Irish literature and Irish history. There's something about the country, you know, yeah. and they embrace this culture. And in doing so, they become as Irish as the Irish themselves. Something like the Normans did back in the uh, 12th <laughs> century. <laughs> What well, say? only it's less bloody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's been <laughs> natural enough, you know, like the American experience, um, unless you're part of the First Nations, right, is sort of like the plunk of the diaspora, uh, you know, mm -hmm. like everybody's back, back there, yeah. you know, and say, oh, he's from back east. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Back east. And so there's always a sense of, like there was a homeland. It was way back there and it's lost in the ancestors, right, because you hear the parents talk about the parents mm -hmm. and so on. But... Um, Something about the music probably really relates people on some, you know, it's level, just right? Such a visceral Instinctual level, right? or yeah. something like that. Yeah, but you have this kind of, I suppose, hyphenated Americans because we, you know, we have Irish Americans and German Americans mm -hmm. and Italian Americans. So there's this idea of being American is one thing, but there's this cultural identity that you can also retain over here, and that's one of the great things about the American experience that you can retain is distinctly Irish cultural identity and be American the same way you can if you're Italian or German mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be yeah you know and they all form this great for kind of American culture um, but it's I mean for us like coming out here to a place like Montana where there's such a strong Irish identity and heritage in many ways it's like it's, you know, it's like going to some other part of Ireland <laughs> I kind of <laughs> reminded when my um, my daughter was celebrating uh, they, they were celebrating the um, centenary of Dunquin School, which is a very famous school back in Ireland, and <clears throat> my daughter was going to school there, and um, there was another little girl uh, who was asked by the TV presenter, because they had this was national news, about this girl from uh, America, and where did she come from, or this, this visitor, and the girl says, oh, she came from Butte, which wasn't true, she's from Missoula, <laughs> and uh, the presenter said, call Butte. Which wears butte, and the girl said, Haraganoch and Akalishanang, and over the hill alongside Dingle. The <laughs> home line, well, then. butte, was like someplace <laughs> like Killarney, Galway. <laughs> in the same sense, it's like that with Montana. Sometimes you say, Okay, we're here in America, but it doesn't feel like you're here in America. Mm. Mm -hmm. It feels yeah. like you're back at home. And this is something that others that have come out from Ireland have talked about, like Liam O'Mwen Lee, who's down there, and others have said, I've spoken more Irish in Montana than I have at home. I feel more Irish in Montana, or, or I feel more at home. That's fascinating. Yeah. So there's this kind of a culture that has kind of been passed down through the generations. I mean, you've got the oldest constantly running uh, the vision of the ancient art of Hibernus in Montana. Yeah. It's been there since 1885. How Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's, I can tell you stories tradition. years ago, but we better get on within the concert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, for the 50th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, and that was December 7th, 1991, yeah. we took a whole bunch of these Missoula freaks over to Anaconda to the Club Modern for a party. We rented a bus, it took 80 people yeah. over there, and we were in the back room. In the front room was the meeting of the Ancient Order of Hibarians. And what could be better? It was a costume party, everybody dressed yeah. in 40s. Right. And there were so many old ladies to take her on the floor, and everyone was so thrilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they were great. A O H yeah, yeah. all the way. Yeah. Yes. But um, we better give them the dates or yeah, something. Yeah, so I don't this, this trouble. Yeah. This we, we better, and then a song. Yeah. Do, or a song and then the dates. Your choice. Why not? Should we play a tune? Play a tune. Please yeah, do, that's Danny. it. Please we'll whet the appetite and we'll tell them how to, to satisfy. Right. Them. Should we? Yeah. Play a few tunes on this um, old instrument, which is made in America. <laughs> uh, like all things made in America, it's pretty powerful. It was made for Tom Carmody, who was um, a great uh, granduncle of mine, and uh, he was a famous um, Irish musician, recorded commercially for the Columbia Record label in New York City in 1935 mm. and six. So he became a renowned musician in the States. Really, uh, he was the first Irish musician to be resident. Irish entertainer in the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Wow. York, yeah. So he was, a, and he came uh, as an immigrant in 1925 and retained that Irishness through the music uh, the trailer was talking about. He inter intermingled, I suppose, with some of the great musicians uh, that had made the journey uh, before that and recorded in America with them. And those recordings in turn went back to Ireland as 78 records and they inspired the generation that came after them. You know, these recordings that were made in America were vital to the development of traditional Irish music in Ireland 
because the musicians in Ireland were hearing these records. They would never have heard, heard these musicians. Oh, so it's this great mm-hmm. cycle. Yeah. 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 For the show, yeah. Fabulous. And, uh, yeah, I'm just delighted the instrument survived. Tom returned in the 60s. <coughs> he was born in 1893. Um, in fact, the same year that the your university was founded here. And uh, he lived until 1986, lived, lived a long life. And um, But after he passed, the instrument uh, fell into the hands of some people who were not quite sure uh, of how to take care of it. And it bound up outdoors in a shed and uh, not in a, in a very safe place. And it, uh, But it, thankfully, we were able to restore uh, what needed restoring in that sounds as it did um, almost 100 years ago now. So I play some tunes that Tom recorded on it, uh, on those recordings for Columbia. This one was then um, The Stick Across the Hub, which was the tune that left with Tom that he brought to America and recorded the yeah. end. Makes you want to. It's a toe tapper, right? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Old Irish jigs, yeah. 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 It's just always so amazing to me that the the the, n- the number of harmon- harmonies you can get mm. out of this one small, relatively small. That, yeah, I think it always amazes people the essence of like folk music, right? So that people that equate wealth in the wrong sort of way. So they want to see a great big Steinway, mm-hmm. you know, and be told it is $75,000 yeah, yeah. or right. something like this. And somebody plays it, but then the same effect can come from an instrument of modest means. Mm-hmm. And everyone's amazed, like, oh, I'm amazed yeah. that, uh, Plus you, know, you can take this with you, and you can't you take can, the yeah. Steinway. <laughs> like the guitar and the flute yeah. and these right. other instruments you, of you modest means. You can bring it with you. It's they go in places, a right? A big part of folk music, yeah. I think, is Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, we should tell people some of the dates. How to oh, get yeah. to hear more of and this then, music. I don't know if Scott can show people at home. Or, this is or does he have to three. zoom in? I don't know if he can. Oh, he's really going to zoom that's right in That's not going to be helpful, yeah. Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> All right, I'll say some. This is uh, Missoula, February 8th happened in beauty. Yeah. Okay. And then February 22nd is happening this in is short order. This is Danny playing, yes, um, two days from today. So. Mm-hmm. This is Thursday. Thursday. Thursday night. At 7.30, oh. UM Recital Hall. Oh, yeah, that's a great space. And you can get the tickets uh, at the door on the night. You can get them online at friendsofirishstudies.com, or you can get them up at Rock and Rudy's. Oh, great. 
Yeah. Everyone knows to go to Rock and Roll yeah. tickets. Tickets yeah. are fifteen dollars per concert and forty five for season passes. Even though they missed one, so maybe yeah. they would unless Still they want bargain. to make a donation. Still a great bargain. Mm -hmm. And then and then if you're not in the Missoula area, Danny's gonna be in Butte, right? On Saturday. On Saturday twenty fourth at the uh, Montana Tech Library Auditorium again at seven thirty. Okay. So yeah, there's two opportunities to hear Danny. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. Awesome. Excellent. And then into next month, there's still more concerts. There is, because my next month's the uh, month of the year. It's just the month of March. Yeah, oh March. my gosh. That's why yeah. you're going to have me in here every week. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's right. right. Leading we'll up to Put the a bed parade. over here. We're just, yeah. just going to turn the yeah. show over to Trail like next yeah. month. That's right. <laughs> so those concerts in Butte, March 9th, uh, in Missoula, March 10th. Yeah. And then again, uh, March 23rd, and the final on March 24th. Correct. And we have our St. Patrick's Day celebration then on the 17th, which is yeah. the actual feast. And you have to be back for that because you have the dinner and the fundraiser we have and everything. the whole oh, right. match, yeah. so people can go what is the website they can go to, to friends of irish studies.com friends of irish studies .com, or just the irish studies website at the university of montana okay you know thursday night's concert on the 22nd is the next chance you can have two days from now two days from viewer. now to hear danny to hear more music um, in the music recital hall, which is great space. Yeah, wonderful awesome. acoustics. You know it from two years ago, three years ago now. And I have to say, you know the the uh, concert, the Christmas concert. Yeah. I took a bit the parting glass. Yeah. Which is really, I guess, Scottish, but also adapted yeah. into the Irish. So I took that bit of the girls and put it on Facebook. I put yeah. five bucks on it just to make sure I got in front of somebody. <laughs> yeah. Five, Not as a bat. But five thousand views. Yeah. Of the parting glass. Of that harmony, five thousand views. Wow! On on. Uh, they were all kids, you know. That they're all Irish. That uh, they're all Irish study students. Yeah. Uh -huh. They came together and put that. It was it was an incredible concert. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. Now one bit it was so popular. Yeah, and, and it's so perfect for the Christmas time, you know, because it's so sentimental. Yeah. And, oh, well, whatever. Danny, thank you so much for that song. You're welcome welcome you. again to the yes, Chili Park. Yes, thanks for coming all Your the way to Montana. Your brave soul and the brave souls who travel with you. Lovely to, lovely to be back. In the back. Anya and I were delighted to, say to be able to return. And please, God, we'll be back again another time. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Looking forward to the concert. Yeah, please, people, go see uh, friendsofirishstudies.com or Irish Studies at University website so you can learn more about what we've just been talking about. So we better get Caroline Patterson out here. She's going to get angry. Caroline and Stephen are just going to go. He's going to be really mad, but yeah. but there's still some hope that she'll talk to us. So, so yeah. right after this, Caroline Patterson will be here talking about Missoula Writing Collaborative Writer's Room. Yes. Right? So uh, Scott's going to show you something. He'll be right back.
There we are. Oh, we're back. Yeah. Uh, I was just about to to fix my shoulder. Ouch. Uh, um, still with the back yeah. problem. So oh, we yeah. are here um, with uh, Stephen Colm. He is the uh, Dean of the College of Visual and Performing Arts at the University of Montana. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for being here. Taking the time to um, to tell us a little bit about the Odyssey of the Stars this year. Well, it's a pretty exciting production we have this year. Uh, this is our 18th annual Odyssey of the Stars. Oh my and gosh. It's a, a big fundraiser for yeah. uh, our students at the university and the uh, School of Arts, School of Media Arts, School of Music and Theater and Dance. And um, the Odyssey is sort of about the, the past, the present, and the future. Mm -hmm. We celebrate, each year we celebrate a, a, an alum that's done well in the world. Uh, we also uh, show off our current students and faculty and the talents on the in, during that evening. And uh, of course, it's about the future because all the proceeds go to scholarships for students yet to come. So right. um, this year we have Casey Criley, um, and Casey is a Emmy Award winning uh, executive producer of uh, Top Chef and uh, has been a producer of Project Runway and a host of other All shows. All my favorite shows. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> and a Top Chef Junior. Top Chef oh, yeah. Junior. Oh, that yeah. was adorable. I saw was that. It was very cute. Was and, it for like kids? And the <laughs> show itself this year, I think, is going to be um, a Project Runway theme. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, so if you if you love Project Runway, you want you don't want to miss this Odyssey. It's going to be pretty amazing. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> excellent. And it's really supporting a, a good cause. Yeah. And. Um, the, there's opportunity for sponsorship as well. It may be mm -hmm. a little late for it, but it's nope. March 3rd, right, the event? Yeah, you bet. So, no. no. Um, people could still be sponsors, platinum, gold, silver, bronze, or they could just go to the show, right? And they could just and they go to really the show. And they really be doing good that way. And, and all proceeds go towards uh, student scholarships, so we're really excited about that. Uh, you know, over the 18 years or 17 years that we've done this show, um, we've... Uh, We've earned uh, over uh, $625,000 in scholarships. Wow. We've given yeah. $625,000 in scholarships to students. So that's really that's, great. That's, uh, you know, uh, I think considerable and, and meaningful and impactful. Absolutely. And I think one of the uh, most amazing things as I've, you know, attended uh, the Odyssey and or, or read about it um, is, is the amazing number of people working at the very top of their their businesses, their their um, fields mm -hmm. that have come out of this school. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. It, it's pretty amazing, and I keep learning about it, people yeah. as well, which is is sort of amazing. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. A couple of years ago, I went to New York, and you know, one of our graduates is the lighting designer at the Metropolitan Opera. He gave me a oh tour of the entire place. How oh, it was cool. exciting! Wow. And then I met uh, two. Uh, paintings uh, graduates who were both teaching at uh, colleges in the New York area and, and had uh, exhibitions. So uh, it was pretty amazing just uh, to realize how many of our students are still out there doing great work. Yeah. Um, and some of them have gone on to, to different fields, but um, many of them have sort of uh, testified that their, uh, the experience and the arts education really prepared them well. Yeah, yeah and, and in a very practical way. I'm going to second that. Years ago, maybe five years ago, okay, mm -hmm. we, we hired someone uh, to be a work-study student from the School of uh, Media Arts, um, Henry Hawkins. Right. Now he's in L.A. We're Facebook friends. He's doing all these music videos. He's having the time of his life and so <laughs> on. That's fantastic. And he, yeah. uh, um, Henry um, is from uh, Anaconda. Right. And right. so it was a big leap for him to go mm -hmm. Anaconda to Missoula, okay, shock enough. <laughs> and then Missoula <laughs> to L.A., you yeah, know, yeah. so that um, I think it's really wonderful that students, you know, that, that Montana might be considered a rural state, mm -hmm. but the education they receive right. um, actually does prepare them. You know. It does, and, you know, uh, Missoula is such an incredible arts community yeah. Yeah. that I think there's so many other opportunities like interning here or in other places around Missoula or 
even in Western Montana, that a lot of our students get some great experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was telling Stephen before the show, oh, yeah. I remember Casey when she was a student here. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and so it's, I mean, I feel actual personal pride just because I knew her when. Um, so it's great that she's coming home. And of course, um, her parents have a long history with the university as they well. They do, yeah. I mean, Jim uh, Criley, uh, taught at the university for many years, uh, really rejuvenated, yeah. um, uh, it all took the Montana rep to another level and then became the dean of the college right. um, yeah, and right. uh, was responsible for the PARTV building and uh, uh, the renovation of the, uh, at the then university theater mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, you know, a great, and actually really the establishment of the media arts school. That's what I was right. going to say. Right. I remember years ago, um, Greg Johnson calling me and he said, well, Jim Crowley is very interested in media arts. This was like 1996, and I was doing a lot of art mm -hmm. video in town and being the artist in the schools for MCAT right. back in those days. And he said, so I'm really interested. What is media art? <laughs> yeah. right. like, well, if it's the weird Fast stuff forward. I do, right. I don't know. <laughs> and, as, and as it continually evolves, we keep asking that question. Yeah, what yes. well, <laughs> will it be? Yeah. Yes, exactly. But it, it's been a fantastic involvement of electronics. When you mm -hmm. think about it, you know, the yeah. switch from film to what's now called like electronic cinematography or something like yeah. this. Yeah. In 96, the computer being able to do some editing was just about being invented. And there was a revolution of people in the old days, if you wanted to do something like what we're doing mm -hmm. right now, it would have cost maybe $100,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Everything involved in making this show, the three cameras, the switcher back wow. there, under 30 We have uh, students who make films on their... Oh yeah, on their phones yeah. and, I mean, and can edit away. Interesting <laughs> yeah. world of and the it arts. can end up at Sundance. I mean, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's, that's what's so incredible. It is kind of shocking for people who haven't been to the Odyssey before. It's a stage show, correct? It yeah. Is. yeah, it is a stage show. Um, this year will it will have quite a bit of. Uh, it'll have uh, live cameramen and camera women, uh -huh. and uh, also. Uh, It'll have uh, all sorts of films because it, it'll have that sort of uh, reality TV type right. set along with it, but it'll have live performances. It will have uh, a fashion show or something about. Well, I'm, I'm not going to give it all away, but I think there. Business. But I think I think yeah, I think it'll it'll have uh, elements of all those things sort <laughs> of um, in there, and okay. and it's it's, I think it should be a fun evening. It's Sounds pretty exciting like it. to be involved in the production. Honestly, to you know, to direct the dear viewers to a website or something um, if they want to buy yeah, it. Yeah, you can go to uh, umt.edu slash umarts slash odyssey. Um, and you can also call 406, uh, let's see, 243-4970. Uh, and they've yeah. got the website up there. Mm -hmm. And then we got the uh, grizticks.com. Grizticks. Right. People want to go there. You can go to grizticks. Uh, right. And UN box office, 243 mm -hmm. 4581. Can they just. 4581, yes. Can they just show up at the Part TV? And they box can. Office? They they can show up at the Part TV box office. We'll, we'll um, you know, we'll have some tickets available okay. the day of the performance. So I think uh, it's a great thing to do. Yeah, and we're not going to scare them. It's adults at 30, students oh, right. at 15, right. mm -hmm. which is going to a super good cause. Yeah. I mean, you'd mentioned Steve, that. Uh, Six hundred twenty-five thousand dollars have been raised yeah, in the history over, of yeah, for all, over the last seventeen years. That's what we've been able to put to give to students and scholarships because yeah. of this event. Um, so that's pretty impressive. It really is. Well, thanks for taking the time to come in and talk to us about it. I'm looking forward to it now. I'm really excited. Well, yeah, it's March third, <laughs> people. Yeah. Um, start time. Seven thirty okay. at the ah. Denison Theater. Okay. Denison Theater seven. You saw it here. You well, know, if you get there a little early, I think there's a little pre show stuff. Oh, going is that on right? Oh. Yeah. Okay. okay. We're, going to, um, we're going to bring in our very patient Caroline for the writing mm -hmm. collaborative, right? Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no mistake about it. Right after this, um, you're going to hear about the writer's room, a really interesting opportunity to explore or hone your writing skills. So stay with us. We'll be back in the Jeff. Hey, how's it going over Oh, have a good day. <laughs> oh, huh, I didn't see you over there. What a nice day to be out and about today. But I want to tell you something about what's going on here. Hold on a second. Let me just adjust this. 
uh, okay, there you go. Let me talk about MCAT. MCAT is doing Saturday drop-ins starting every Saturday this fall, winter, and spring season from 1 to 5 p.m. Let's go check it out. Come on. MCAT is a great way to create. All you got to do is come on down to our location at 500 North Higgins. It's as easy as that. See you there. So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, mm. the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Wow. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. No. <laughs> Elder abuse is a growing problem, and it's happening right here in our Montana communities. At least one in ten older adults are victims of physical or emotional abuse, financial exploitation, or neglect. To get help or report elder abuse, call your local area agency on aging or adult protective services at 1-844-277-9300. We yeah, are yeah, back yeah. after a brief discussion of how we look on TV. Right, we want, a, we want an on-staff makeup artist. Yes. <laughs> um, well, Caroline is here to talk about the Missoula Writing Collaborative hey. and the Writer's Room in particular. Welcome and thank, thank you. Thank you. Th thank you for having me. And you know it. Thanks for waiting. Yes. It's not always easy to be the last one on. Now, is this the second or third year you've this done this? This is the third year. Third year? Um, and uh, we moved it up a little bit because we thought uh, we, we were trying to do this in April for Poetry Month, but right. we think that bad weather is more conducive to writing workshops. That's probably uh, <laughs> I think that's because, true. <laughs> uh, but, but they've been really successful for us, and they've been really fun. It's a really fun time to, uh, for people to come and take, uh, try out some of our uh, classes in poetry and fiction and uh, so we have songwriting again this year, oh, okay. which is really popular with yeah. Carolyn Keys, uh, who a lot of people know from playing music around town. Um, and uh, and they're short, you know, they're two hour long, two hour long classes, and teachers can get OPI credits for them, so um, they can get their uh, teaching credits. Oh, um, I see. And OPI is Office of Public Instruction. Mm -hmm. Office of and public teachers each year or should do something to enhance their right. Right. Training. continuing education. S continuing yeah. education. Yeah. So, so this year we moved it up to March third, and uh, which is a Saturday. And there's two sets of classes. One one's at ten in the morning, and the other is at two. And then we always have a little. Uh, uh, writers can't go without their cocktail parties. Duh. Uh, so we have a little 4.30 <laughs> cocktail Wonderful. party uh, at Radius Gallery, and, and that's always really fun. Everybody oh, yeah. just gathers and looks at all the beautiful art and, and gets a chance to kind of get to know each other um, at the end of the day. So it's a really fun day, and uh, we get people, a lot of times we get people from uh, you know the surrounding communities too, um, and it's a great chance to just try your hand at um, things that are new, so a short story, or um, Cheryl's doing a collage poem with uh, using the poetics of uh, Bachelard, and cu cutting them into pieces, and then you know reassembling oh, it into a new yeah. poem of your own, uh, which is that's really fun to do. Um, are they words you mean, and then they move the words like phrases around? Or, mm -hmm. words or phrases, or cut them into words or phrases, and then you can move them around, just write poems oh, of your sure. own. So it's really fun to do do that. Um, so so the opportunities are in this one day, this one Saturday, different tracks from ten to twelve. You have a choice of it looks like four different 
different for different classes classes and you can pick yeah. whether it's so you, poetry or songwriting or prose or short stories right and then a break and then there's a lunch break and there's not a any established lunch mm-hmm. you know people just go off on their own and then they can come back at two and there's another set of three classes that are independent um and uh and again we have ones on a graphic novel uh one is on on nature writing um Mm -hmm. and the other is on um uh what is that uh oh the form the form poetry um, right which is really fun it's like um a lot of times people if you're kind of stuck writing or you've never really tried to write a lot of poetry Form writing is a great way to give it. Absolutely. Try try to write it because it uh, form poetry can free up a lot of things that you didn't even know you were thinking. When you're counting syllables. Uh, when you're counting syllables, when you have to, um, y- when you have to repeat lines at a certain mm-hmm. interval. Um, you often will come up with things that you didn't even know you were thinking. It's like distracting your conscious mind. Absolutely, it's like yeah. a way to trick your conscious mind into revealing. Right. The other cool thing about these is that they're happening in all sorts of great businesses around town. So one of the things we really oh, wanted to do was I thought to, they were the sponsors. No, the, one these of the things are the locations. we wanted to do was to keep it downtown so people mm-hmm. could kind of mill around. I think it gives it kind of a lively feel. Yeah. Um, so it's at Shakespeare and Company and um, Fact and Fiction mm-hmm. and Boyle, Devney and Meyer. That and, building on Fourth, uh, the the Ditchstone building, and then mm-hmm. Monolode, which is uh, one of the buildings. It's also downtown, oh. and then Radius Gallery is going to be where we have our um, uh, cocktail party. But it, you know, it's a nice way to kind of buzz around between classes. Everything's walking distance apart, yeah. and um, the classes are really inexpensive. They're eighteen dollars for students. They're um, Thirty dollars, I think, for the general public, okay. uh, and twenty-eight dollars for the general public. Uh, it's very easy to sign up. Uh, you just go on this Missoula Writing Collaborative dot uh, submittable dot com, and um, you can sign up for one or two classes. And the submittable fee will be attached to that, but it's very minimal. Yeah, um, we use it. You know, for our um, so media assistance grants, yeah, they're great. really wonderful. Great. Oh, it's so much so one workshop easier, right? it, for the general public is twenty eight dollars. Two workshops is a screaming bargain at fifty dollars. Yeah, um, and plus a cocktail party. Yeah, and the cocktail <laughs> party is yeah. just you know you, you just come and join us. Right. So, so that's Saturday, March third, and then you have something else going on in April. Right. So we do. This is a li- this is a little new venture for us, and this is a poetry salon with one of the writers who's been with us for a very long time, yeah. Mark, Mark Gibbons. Um, he's got, I think, 11 po- books of poetry out. Um, and this will be a uh, six-week class, and he wanted it to be a poetry salon. Um, so it, it's six weeks, uh, a six-week class will meet um, uh, at Fact and Fiction, and, um, and uh, students will work with him writing poetry, uh, you know, reading one another's work. Uh, he wants it to be very open and uh, and embracing uh, as a workshop. Um, and he's very welcoming. Again, teachers can get um, OPI credit for it. Um, Mark has been probably, Mark has been a very successful and very um, uh, popular writer in our schools. Um, I think Kim, your son had He him, taught right? my son and oh, I still Charlie. have some of those poems. And I was actually in an informal writing group with Mark many, many years ago and he is just wonderful. He's the most supportive, yeah. um, engaged, you know, open to what whatever you're trying to do. He would be a really great salon leader. Yeah, because um, I think he understands, it, it, you know, as good teachers do that you know, people have different voices and different different takes, um, different approaches, um, and you know, and I think all of our writers do. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, that I think that's why these classes will be really fun for people. 
Um, I think it's a brilliant idea because why should kids get to have all the fun? Well, That's yeah. True. And but <laughs> we should point out to viewers who are not familiar, Missoula Riding Collaborative yes. has done so much work in the schools yes. for years. Uh, introducing kids to the art and pleasure of writing mm -hmm. and so on. Yes. And this is something for adults, which so is this really is, nice. Yeah, we haven't done a lot of adult programming, um, and this is just something we do uh, a couple of times a year so adults get a little sense of, you know, what it is that we do. Yeah. Um, and, and so the parents and teachers get a chance for us to, um, to, to see what we do. So it's a great idea. It is. Idea. So um, we've got that website. It's long on submittable, but if people go to MissoulaWritingCollaborative.org, will they also link up with that? Can they yeah. link from your website? So yeah, here's yeah. a website to the, the, the best black place hole. to go. Yeah, the best place to go <coughs> is the Missoula Writing, uh, uh, Missoula Writing Collaborative dot submittable. Really? Yeah. I know, Scott. Can you show it before we have to go? I know we have one minute, but you'd have to type it in, Missoula Writing Collaborative. Dot dot submittable dot com. Com. Yeah. That doesn't seem so hard. No. Yeah. Missoula Writing Collaborative dot submittable. Well, now I'm exhausted now that I've said <laughs> so it. Didn't seem that it's hard so at hard. First. But if we go to your website, is there a link there that'll take us to the to the submittable? Yes, site? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Because that. Cause yeah, that everybody. The right yeah. yeah, and there was a phone number on the poster. We could say that in the oh, waiting. Yes. Okay. Okay. And there's the submittable. There's the submittable site. Or you can call 549-3348 for more information. That's right. There you have it. And that would be me. That's her own so. personal phone. She'll probably be at the Don't abuse store. the privilege, yeah. dear oh, viewer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I will be so helpful. Well, it's great. I hope you get a good turnout. I it do, too. It sounds like a fun thing to do. It really Both does. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to Thank visit you for having us. me. Yeah. Oh, you know that. Um, I guess we better go, Kim. Are we done? Yeah, I've got five just now. Wow. So. Um, we timed that well. We did. Um, the next program will be Monday, March 5th. Um, I'll be here. Oh, excellent. I know we're going to have Missoula Aging Services. They're talking about March's Meals on Wheels. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a, a women's fair going on with all the proceeds going to Silver Lining and to um, Living Art. You are really organized. Apparently, they're they're banging down my door. Gee, so wants to be on your show. I guess that's the story. And your show, <laughs> too. So uh, we'll see you guys um, uh, for the new show on Monday, mm -hmm. March 5th. Until then, uh, for MCAT, I'm Joel Baird. And I'm Kim Anderson. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>